Hello there kitties, I'm Kerry, the vacuum tube witch, and today I've got a Soviet drum synthesizer! And the little PSR, in for repair, it's got a few instruments not working. And we're gonna find out what's going on with it. Because it's the first time I'm taking this little thing apart. And I definitely love to see what's inside. The synthesizer has a power supply. 220 volts, uh, 3 quarters of an amp with the Soviet uh, flat socket outlet uh, it can't be used with uh, the modern uh, sockets uh, here in Poland so I'll be using a transformer power supply from my collection also a uh, 12 volt and I think that uh, I will uh, send this uh, synthesizer together with, uh, with that power supply. And there was also some documentation. Looks like this documentation got lost in the discombobulation, but yeah. The original one? made with a typewriter so let's go to the bench and find out what's inside let's start with the instructions manual this is the programmable rhythm synth synthesizer PSR user manual and it's all uh, it's all uh, done with a typewriter or a uh, character printer in uh, Cyrillic Then the font is pretty narrow. And uh, there's the connection schematic. And some uh, predefined uh, programs. There's a battery compartment in, uh, in the device. There's the MIDI control uh, feature. And this is the warranty sheet and uh, a, uh, a poll. The owner was supposed to be um, to send it uh, back to the manufacturer. And some notes from uh, the original owner, I guess. So, let's try hooking this thing up. And there's the DC barrel jack, uh, center positive 12 volts. This is the left and this is the right output and this is the headphone output. This is uh, a uh, tape recorder and amplifier output. This is the MIDI input and this is the MIDI output. And turn this thing on uh, by uh, setting this to the left. I also connect the 
audio amplifier and speaker right above my bench. It starts with one instrument. And uh, here we've got uh, accent pause. Uh, those are not the instruments. Uh, this is uh, for setting the the values, uh, song, tempo, and uh, rhythm. And the synthesizer has a vacuum fluorescent display. Thing of beauty, J forever. We'll see how it looks. But uh, first things first. Uh, what uh, what works? Uh, what doesn't? Cowboy. Realm. Head zero. Gong. Bongo. This totally doesn't sound like a bongo, it sounds like a uh, DC pulse. Clap. Bass. Those switches, uh, they are big uh, tech switches from uh, what I saw on the photos of, uh, of this model. Big uh, SMD text switches. Maybe I can find a replacement. Uh, it could uh, really use a replacement because um, they are pretty, pretty hard to operate and uh, pretty unreliable. Hat also sounds like a DC pulse. Tom one, no sound at all. Wonder why? Tom too. And Tom three. And let's start some rhythm. Those are the volume uh, adjustment keys. And this is the step uh, step iteration key, I think. And this is the metronome. Not sure how to operate those. Anyway, let's take it apart. I turned it on before taking it apart. Dave Jones won't be proud of me. My wild guess is that uh, those screws are pretty loose. They could also use some washers under them. I guess that it's also those screws. Plastic screws. And 
maybe let's get a better view. There's also a uh, anti-tamper seal. The unit has been tampered with. So those two... I guess that uh, we're okay now. Discombobulating. And the unit uh, discombobulates into two parts separated with a uh, piece of paper. Then the piece of paper is attached uh, using the holes. And it all looks pretty nice, pretty clean. And those are the ROM chips, uh, the old school uh, EEPROM. Not double EEPROM, but EEPROM with uh, the UV erasing window. And there's another EEPROM here. Look at the thing of beauty and the joy forever. Ceramic with gold-plated leads. Absolutely friggin' fantastic. The battery compartment... Come on. With some uh, deteriorating sponge. Off with this ugly old sponge. I don't want to keep that thing. Of course the sponge deteriorates into Sticky residue. Just the open input on the amplifier. Clean it later. So uh, we've got double A batteries uh, for the for keeping the memory settings. Otherwise, uh, it would be lost from the RAM chips. And uh, there is a, a bunch of operational amplifiers uh, for each one of those instruments right here with some capacitor. There's a, a pair of uh, amplifiers for each one of them because uh, it's a stereo uh, instrument. And we've got old electrolytic capacitors in the power supply section. But other than that, um, it's all uh, pretty nice and shiny and combobulated. Though some of the boards uh, are pretty lightly attached. So let's take a closer look. This is T1, T3, that would be the Tom, and Tom number two. MB. MB it would be hmm. 
Not sure what MB would be. BR, HB and KK. KK would be Cobal and... Uh, and Clap. And I think that at least with uh, with one of those sounds, uh, the it's uh, it's a matter of a uh, corrupted uh, ROM chip. But first thing uh, I'd like to check is uh, the the buttons. So I will. Disconnect the the power supply. I will disconnect the, the upper board. Some connections were made um, by the factory, but uh, nonetheless, um, the PCB design is very nice. All very nice and professional. This does not want to discombobulate. I might have to pry it up. It's use the first, but not too much first or else you're gonna damage the thing. Just a single wire holding those things together. Looking at the battery compartment, it's got a shunt on one side and connections on the other, so we've got four batteries connected in series. And now, working on uh, the upper board. It has a matrix keyboard of uh, 3,010 columns. And I will use a meter to check uh, whether those, whether some of those uh, buttons are okay. Takes a lot of patience, but I'm all about patience. So this is the bottom part of the keyboard. Or rather shall I say the top part of the keyboard. It's got rubber inserts on, uh, on the keys. And the rubber is in a good shape. The aluminum plate is attached with the molten uh, studs. And the, the colors, um, they are made with plastic inserts. Pretty interesting. So let's take a look at the top part of the PCB. And we've got an obvious vacuum fluorescent display on the left. Thing of beauty, joy forever.
And we've got a lot of tacked switches. They are actually through hole technology and I uh, I wonder if I can find nice uh, replacements for those because uh, for the sheer age of uh, of the machine uh, they could really use a replacement. So it's multimeter time again. Test every one of them. Sometimes the response is pretty sluggish. And that's also why I would love to replace them. So, theoretically, all of them work, but uh, there was a problem with Tom 1, that would be this. The button itself is working, so it may be somewhere deeper. Let's put the multimeter on a diode test and check the coordinates. Maybe it's a broken diode, maybe it's a connection.
That's completely stupid. The diode is dead. It's completely unreliable. No Soviet diodes. Diode gun wild. They have weird markings on the uh, on the packages. Gotta check all of them. Because uh, I see I see a strip on one end and uh, tend to assume that this is the cathode, but in case of those Soviet components, it's the anode. So, if I uh, put it on the diode test, uh, I've got uh, the anode on the left hand uh, lead, now it has a strip. Strange. Guess the contact is not good. And now I'm wondering why there is no diode on this button. It's the pause. And the diode here is missing. Why? And I think I know why it's missing. I guess that it's because it's here. Strange PCB design, really. Or is this for this button? This is for this. This is for this, but... There should be a diode for this button. And it goes nowhere. It goes nowhere. Completely stupid. Looks like I found a uh, design bug in uh, in the little PSR. So, anode on the left, right?
Yeah, at least that key will do something. For the first time since the unit was manufactured. And all other diodes are in place. So the problem was with this one, right? Yeah, so... The key itself... And the matrix uh, is not the source of the problem. It's somewhere deeper. So I will f have to find uh, the schematic for the device. <coughs> and see if I can get it to... If I can uh, get it to make any sound. For the time being, I will just screw only a few of those screws. I'm doing them by hand, um, not to damage the thread. There's a lot of them because of the keyboard. Just do all of them. And now it's just a matter of 
looking for the signals on on the operational amplifiers. I got it noted. Time to fire this thing up. And Tom is still away. Tom is not at home. Disconnecting the amplifier. And I will poke this thing with a scope. To see if I get a signal and looking at the note I took it's uh, the order of the channels is uh, Tom 1, Tom 3, Snare Tom 2, and so, and so on and so on. So I should be having the Tom 1 right here. And you can't see it now, but I'm looking at the scope. First, maybe I'll start some rhythm. So I will check the Tom 3 and one of the operational amplifiers. Those are basically UD608. Uh, the pinout is the same as 741, so I should have uh, the output on pin number 6. If it's Tom 3... should be seeing something, but I don't. Also worth noting is that the capacitors are placed
above the operational amplifiers. That's interesting and pretty confusing. see the signal anywhere. Interesting. So I guess this will need some more research. I also noticed that the VFD stopped uh, stopped working as I was working on this thing. But it restarted again, so I I think we'll be fine. Let's connect the scope and check again. Sometimes confusing things happen. And I can see, I can already see a waveform. So there's the summing node, and uh, there's the inputs from the um, amplifiers. Number two is the inverting.
there's just a lot of a lot of guesswork if uh, if I don't have the schematics. And uh, my suspicion is uh, that uh, some of the ROM chips are corrupted. And I will take a closer look at, uh, at the schematic and I will also try to reverse engineer the synthesizer board. At least uh, to learn what goes where. Oh my goodness, there's gonna be a lot of undoing. One size is too big and the other size is too slow, small.
Okay, let's take a look at the board. Still a lot of makeshift connections. Some potential cold joints. And uh, those are the signal lines going from the going to the op amps. Those uh, integrated circuits uh, feed uh, into the op amps. Because that would be the digital to analog converter. Six, six lines uh, going to those opens and uh, there's another six lines going to those opens and uh, there are there are two opens here and I think this might be the output section. The output is on, on those tracks. And another open. Then the three resistors are all connected on this side. And yeah, that looks like a um, summing node. So, I guess that it's time to wrap it up uh, the first part uh, of my work on the LAL because uh, I will need to do some more research uh, on the unit. Maybe I'll find some uh, schematics. And get some ideas, so uh, what might have gone wrong and how to fix that. So, until next time, stay determined and carry on.